All elements in the periodic table strive to be like the noble gases. They want eight electrons on their outer orbit so they can become stable. In order for this to happen, elements must lose or gain an electron. Group one and two elements will lose, or more correctly, donate electrons. This creates an ion with a positive charge, known as a cation. Similarly, group six and seven elements will gain or accept an electron and so create an ion with a negative charge, known as an anion. A cation and anion form an electrostatic interaction which leads to the formation of an ionic salt. They appear as a 3D crystal lattice under the microscope. As you can see in this demonstration, the salt disappears in water. What actually happens is that the ions in the water attract the ions in the salt and pull them out of the crystal lattice structure, giving the illusion that the salt has disappeared. During this experiment, you're using unknown chemicals that are generally not regarded as safe, so please work carefully. Waste disposal is very important, as again, you're working with unknown chemicals, so they must not be poured down the sink. There is a waste bucket in each sink, and this is where your waste will be poured. When working with flames, make sure to have the holder at the top of the test tube and point the opening of the test tube away from your face. Please make sure to wear your glasses and coat when working with flames. When working in the fume hood, make sure the hood is pulled down as far as possible so that your face and chest are covered. When finished, make sure the fume hood is pulled down fully. In first year, you will explore the characteristics of six groups of cations. Insoluble chlorides, acid insoluble sulfides, insoluble hydroxides, base insoluble sulfides, insoluble carbonates, and generally soluble cations. Each group can be distinguished based on the reactions it undergoes. The individual cation can then be determined using confirmatory tests unique to that cation. The copper cation, represented by Cu2+, is an acid insoluble sulfide. We know this because it does not form a white precipitate when hydrochloric acid is added and forms a black precipitate when hydrogen sulfide is added. We can confirm this cation as copper 2 plus because when reacted with potassium ferrocyanide, it turns a chocolatey color that goes blue when ammonium hydroxide is added. The iron cation represented by Fe3 plus is an insoluble hydroxide. Before carrying out any determining tests, we must oxidize the salt so that only Fe3 plus cations are present. This is done by adding concentrated nitric acid in the fume hood. Boiling chips are then added to the solution and it is boiled gently for three minutes. It is important to allow the solution to cool afterward. To determine that Fe3 plus is an insoluble hydroxide, add ammonium chloride and ammonium hydroxide until the solution becomes basic. A red-brown precipitate suggests the ion is Fe3 plus. To prove this, we react the salt with potassium ferrocyanide. The appearance of a Prussian blue color confirms the salt is Fe3+. The calcium ion, Ca2+, is an insoluble carbonate. By adding ammonium chloride and ammonium hydroxide, the solution becomes basic. When we add ammonium carbonate, a white precipitate is formed. This is characteristic of insoluble carbonates. To confirm the cation is Ca2+, we react it with ammonium hydroxide and ammonium oxalate. A white precipitate appears that is insoluble in water, but soluble in hydrochloric acid. The most common anions used in first year are chloride, sulfate and nitrate. They are straightforward because you only need to carry out confirmatory tests for each of them. The chloride anion, Cl-, is acidified with diluted nitric acid and then reacted with a couple of drops of silver nitrate solution. A white precipitate forms and can be dissolved in dilute ammonium hydroxide. The nitrate anion is acidified using dilute sulfuric acid. Solid ferrous sulfate is added and then working in the fume hood, the test tube is held at an angle and four to five drops of concentrated sulfuric acid are allowed to run down the side of the test tube. The formation of a brown ring confirms the anion is nitrate. The sulfate anion is acidified using dilute hydrochloric acid. When barium chloride is added, a heavy white precipitate proves the cation is sulfate. When you have distinguished the cation and anion, balance the charges to name your ionic salt. The cation always appears first, followed by the anion. Because sulfate has twice the charge of sodium, 
then twice as much sodium must be present in the salt. Therefore, the salt is Na2SO4 or sodium sulfate. We hope this video has helped your understanding of qualitative analysis. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully these videos have improved your knowledge of chemistry and first year experience at NUI Galway.